even the most seasoned parents are susceptible to blunders. We're all human after all, but regardless of how long you've been in the parenting game, there are some pitfalls you should avoid when it comes to caring for a kiddo's teeth. Today, I'm going to share with you major brush mistakes that can easily be avoided when creating an oral health routine for you and your family that will keep you on the road to success. Check the link in my description below to learn more about my Bristles Brushing Basics box. It has all the tools you need to achieve happy, healthy smiles, and it comes with videos on how to use everything in the box. And by the way, I put up videos like this one every single week, so be sure to subscribe. Brushing mistake number one, you picked the wrong toothbrush. This is one that I've suffered from, and I hope that I can help you learn from my mistakes. Finding the right toothbrush might not be on your list of things to do. You might not have even thought about looking for the right toothbrush. It might be something you've never even thought about, and that's okay. And you may have to try a few different types of toothbrush before you find the right one that works best for you or loved one. The size of the toothbrush is important, especially if you're working with a small mouth. Brush sizes vary, and head sizes, handles, and different angles. The critical part is that the bristles remove the bacteria and loosen plaque from the teeth and gums that cause gum disease and lead to decay. Some people think the harder the bristle, the better they clean. Soft bristles are very effective at removing plaque below the gum line. Hard bristles can actually wear down your tooth structure, especially if you're a scruggle. And there's the whole electric versus manual debate. A manual toothbrush can get around 300 strokes per minute when you're brushing. An electric toothbrush can get around 33,000 strokes per minute. If you've been following me, you know I'm a burst ambassador and I love the burst toothbrush. If you'd like more information about the burst brush, I'll put it in the link below and you can watch my video, Why I Like the Burst Brush. When you find a good toothbrush that you love, sometimes it's hard to give up, which brings us to brushing mistake number two, to holding onto your toothbrush for too long. A toothbrush loses its superpowers when it's warm. When it's warm. So we recommend you change it when the bristles become frayed bent or it's looking more like a square brush than a toothbrush. It's time to chuck it and it's best that you change it every three or four months. It's also smart not to share a toothbrush with anyone else. You don't know what type of bacteria they have. Sharing your toothbrush means you're sharing that bacteria too. You're going to want to store your toothbrush, keep it in a place where it can easily dry between toothbrushing to keep the mold and bacteria from growing on it if it stays wet. Brushing mistake number three, you forget to brush along the gum line. Bacteria love to hang out where the tooth meets the gum, and we miss this place a lot. It's one of the reasons that one or two people have gingivitis. We have about one to three millimeters of gum tissue that act like a moat around the tooth that you need to get under and clean out where the plaque bacteria and your leftover lunch hides. If you anger your toothbrush properly, it can get about two to three millimeters below the gum line. That's why the bristles need to be soft so you can brush along the gum line without calling injury. Brushing needs to get the whole tooth, at least everything your toothbrush can reach, and that means below the gum line. We spend more time brushing the chewing surfaces, and we spend more time brushing the outsides where we can see instead of getting the inside, and that's why I see that when we brush people's teeth. You just need to get the right angle. It's not tough. We recommend you hold the toothbrush at a 45 degree angle along the gum line so the bristles can sweep just below the gum line. Remember to get the tongue side too. Oh yeah, that's where most people miss when they're brushing. Everybody brushes the outsides and the chewing surfaces, but on the inside, where we call the tongue side, not so much. Most people don't brush the tongue side of their teeth. Shocking, right? It's very easy to tell when I see people because that's where the inflammation is, that's where the debris sits, and that's what causes gingivitis. And then we have to scrape off that hard calculus because you're missing when you brush. Don't forget to brush your tongue too to get rid of that bacteria that causes bad breath. Mistake number four. Letting your kiddos brush by themselves and you not following up behind them where they miss. Listen, I get it. I know we're all busy. I've been there. You may be in a hurry to get out the door in the morning or get your kiddos tucked in at night. Regardless of what reason, you need to be aware of the impact of letting your kids brush their teeth by themselves and what impact that might have long term. I never want you to have long guilt or feel uncomfortable or feel like you're on your own. Kids consistently miss the outsides of the upper teeth and the insides of the lower teeth. On the tongue side like we were just talking about, so if you're short on time in a hurry, you need to go back in and brush, just brush those areas. And then the next time it's time to brush, get the other ones. There's a plan of attack you can with this. You need to make sure that you keep a cycle going and keep a routine and you have a system in place so that you realize where the kids miss, you need to get in there and brush because you don't want to allow that plaque and bacteria to sit there too long because it weakens the enamel and causes decay. One of the things to speak about in the Healthy Mouth Movement is how you are your own healthcare advocate. As the mom or parent of the family, you're the leader of the family. You're going to be the indisputable, undeniable coach. 
you are someone that defends your child more than anybody else. So when you look at what they're doing and how they're doing, you make a huge difference. You make an impact on your child's routine and you can do a better job at brushing than they can. One of the things that I speak about a lot is modeling. Your kids wanna be like you, well, until they're teenagers. So if they see you brushing, they're gonna to wanna to brush too. And this is something that you can make fun and you can create fun family memories that will last a lifetime around toothbrushing. The biggest thing for you to understand, what you teach them now is what they're gonna carry on for life. You're creating habits for your kids that they're gonna teach your grandkids. So in essence, you're teaching your children a routine that they're gonna pass down to their children. Most people don't remember who taught them how to brush or how they even were taught or if they're doing correctly because they're just doing what they were taught and they're just getting in there and brushing thinking they're doing a good job. This is why I want you to teach your kids with intention and explain to them why they're brushing, why it's important, and where they're missing. Don't threaten them. You get cavities, you have to go to the dentist. That's what creates fear of going to the dentist. So try to avoid using the dentist as a punishment. Because then if they are in pain and they need to see a dentist, it might make it difficult when you get there. So I wanna encourage you to step up your game, pay attention to what you're doing with your kiddos and what you're teaching them. Most toothbrushing habits don't evolve and they start at home and you don't get feedback on how you're doing. And that brings me to mistake number four, not checking to see where your kiddos are missing. Let me tell you, when I first started brushing my daughter's teeth, I thought it was gonna be fun. I'm a dental professional, right? Nobody can brush the way I can, the way I do. Brushing your kids' teeth is nothing like brushing teeth in the office. I needed a dental trainer light to see what I was doing to get back there. So when you think to yourself, your kids got this, they're doing a good job, think again. One of the biggest limiting beliefs that you can have as a parent and I want you to get this out of your brain is thinking that your kids are doing a good job and you don't need to be checking. For your kiddos, this is where you can step into your zone of genius. Using something to stain their teeth to see where they're missing is the key to brushing all the surfaces and preventing the dreaded cavities. So ask yourself, what is one thing you can do to show your kids how they're doing, where they're missing, and have the biggest effect? I call it disclosing. Seeing is believing. Staying in the team and self-care for both you and your family is taking the time to check and see where you're missing. It can be a game changer. When you see where you're missing and that plaque, you're gonna see not only where you're missing, but how hard it is to get back in there and brush that plaque off. It's not realistic to think you can stain the teeth every time you brush, because we recommend brushing morning and night. So doing this every time is probably not ideal. So what I do recommend is try to accomplish a goal and pick a time when you know you can take the time to stain the teeth and make it a fun science experiment and you're not yelling at your kids to hurry up. The biggest thing you can do for your kids is to have a clear picture of what they need to accomplish to create healthy routines and habits that work for your schedule. And this is gonna be a game changer for your family and your kids when it comes to taking care of their teeth. Last but not least, brushing mistake number five, arguing with your kids about toothpaste. This was the biggest struggle that I personally had with my daughter. And I realized with working with parents that I wasn't the only one that struggles with this. My daughter has sensory issues and I didn't know that until she was older, which made me feel terrible as a mom and a dental professional. But we thought about using toothpaste and she would spit it out at me and cry. And I learned in hygiene school, you're supposed to brush twice a day floss and use a fluoride toothpaste. So my daughter was gonna use a fluoride toothpaste. I tried 10 different types of toothpaste before I realized this was a battle, I wasn't gonna fight and I wasn't gonna win. And I don't want anyone to go through the struggles that I did. The solution for me was easy, don't use toothpaste. Seems easy now, but it took me months to figure that out. Toothpaste was only on her teeth for two minutes and then we'd rinse and spit. So the fluoride wasn't even on her teeth long enough to make a difference. Moral of the story, you don't have to use toothpaste. What you do need to do is brush all the surfaces of the teeth and check to see where you're missing. We even have well water. The only cavity she got was when a permanent tooth came in, it was an ectopic eruption and took out the baby tooth that ate that tooth away and she had to have that one pulled. But not brushing with toothpaste seemed to make a difference in our family. You're gonna make your fair share of mistakes as a parent. But thanks to this video, you can avoid some of the common pitfalls that parents experience when it comes to brushing their kiddos' teeth. If you want even more in-depth videos and tools that I recommend for proper brushing, be sure to click the link below and get my Bristles Brushing Basics box. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like it, hit the thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe for more weekly videos.